Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. What is 6 plus 66 plus 666 plus so on, where each new number has one more digit and one more 6, and you continue the pattern all the way until a number which has only 6s for 666 digits? Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So let me first explain the answer to this problem. One way you could write the answer is in the following form. It'll be 6 ninths times the following quantity. We first have a fraction where the numerator is 10 to the power of 667 minus 10, and the denominator is 9. We then subtract 666 from that fraction. But what is this as a number? We could write it out in decimal form in the following fashion. It's a 666 digit number, which has the string 740 repeated over and over again until the very last three digits, which are 296. So the string 740 is repeated and consists of 663 of the digits of the 666 digit number. So how do we derive these answers? In order to explain the proof, I want to go over a concept that is central to the proofs. This will be the sum of a geometric series. Let's consider a geometric series which has k terms and a common ratio r. So we start out with 1, and then we're going to multiply that to get the next term, which is r. We then multiply r by the common ratio r again to get r squared, and we continue and we keep adding terms all the way until we get to the kth term, which is r to the power of k minus 1. To find the sum, we do a neat little trick. We multiply the sum by the common ratio r. Look at what this will do to each term. The first term 1 becomes r, the second term r becomes r squared, and the pattern continues. We've essentially shifted over the summation and we get one more new term, r to the power of k. We now subtract the second equation from the first. This will cancel out many terms. In particular, we cancel out the r's, we cancel out the r squares, we cancel out all of these middle terms, and we cancel out r to the power of k minus 1. When we subtract the two equations, the only terms that survive are 1 and minus r to the power of k. We now factor s sub k on the left hand side, and then we divide both sides by 1 minus r. And that's the formula that we want. The sum of a geometric series will be equal to a fraction where the numerator is 1 minus r to the power of k, and the denominator is 1 minus r. Sometimes it'll be convenient to multiply the numerator and denominator by negative 1, and that's the formula I use in this video, which is r to the power of k minus 1 all over r minus 1. One more note, let's suppose we have a geometric series that starts out with some other term a. We then essentially multiplied each term by a, so that we'll also multiply our sum by a. So these would be our formulas if our geometric series started out with the term a. For completeness, I'll mention that if we were dealing with an infinite series, if our common ratio has an absolute value of less than 1, then we could find the sum of the infinite series by taking the limit as k goes to infinity, and this will become the well-known formula of the sum of a geometric series, which is a divided by 1 minus r. So now, let's get to the problem. We'll generalize by saying the last number we're adding has n digits. The first step is we'll factor out a 6 from each term. So we now have 6 multiplied by the following sum, 1 plus 11 plus 111 plus so on, all the way until the last term has only 1s for n digits. We now write out each term in expanded form. So 1 stays as 1 but 11 will become 1 plus 10. Similarly, the next term, which would be 111, will be 1 plus 10 plus 100. 
And we continue writing this all the way until the very last term, which is only one for n digits. So what would be the expanded form of this? We'd basically be adding up the powers of 10. 1 plus 10 plus 100 plus so on, all the way up to 10 to the power of n minus 1. Now we notice a pattern in the summation. Each of the parenthetical terms will be a geometric series with a common ratio 10 and a different parameter with a different number of terms. So we can now use the formula for the sum of a geometric series for each of these groups. So 1 can be rewritten as 10 minus 1 divided by 9. 1 plus 10 can be rewritten as 10 squared minus 1 over 9. And we can keep writing each of these grouped terms in that way until the very last term, which we will get as 10 to the power of n minus 1 all over 9. Now, what we can do this term is that we can factor out a 1 9th from each of the terms in the summation. So we have 6 ninths times the following summation. We have some powers of 10 being added together, and we have negative 1 in each of these groups. So now, let's rearrange the terms in this summation. We'll group all the powers of 10 on the left and all the negative ones on the right. Now, each of the groups had a negative 1, so there will be n terms of negative 1. This will simplify to be negative n. Now, we have something magical. We'll factor out a 10, and it'll make it a little more explicit that we have another geometric series. So again, we can use the formula for the sum of a geometric series. So we end up with the following formula. And this will be very close to the answer I presented earlier once we distribute the 10. So we have 10 to the power of n plus 1 minus 10 all over 9. Then we subtract n, and then we multiply the entire thing by 6 ninths. To get to our specific case where we had 666 equal to n, we substitute that in, and we get the answer that I presented earlier. So now, how can we write this out as a decimal number? Well, what we can do is we can expand the exponent. 10 to the power of 667 will be a number that's 1 followed by a bunch of zeros. This number will have 668 digits. We now subtract 10. So when we have a number that's 1 followed by a bunch of zeros and we subtract out 10, we're going to end up with the number that's all these 9s and the very last two digits are 90. This number in particular will have one fewer digit, so it'll be 667 digits long. We now need to divide by 9. So a number that has only 9s and then a 90 at the end. When we divide that by 9, it'll have only 1s and then a 0 at the end. It'll still be the same number of digits. We'll now distribute the term 6 over 9 to each of these. So then we can simplify by multiplying 6 ninths times these terms. So we'll e the first thing that'll be easier is 6 ninths times 666, and that'll be 444. Now, how do we figure out the older multiplication? Well, you can try and do a little bit of long division, and you'll quickly notice a pattern. You'll basically end up with 740 being repeated over and over again. So 663 of these digits will be 740. The last three will also be 740, but those last three will be affected by subtracting out by 444. So we'll now subtract out, which will affect the last three digits. And those will become 296. So that's how we get to this answer of a 666 digit number, where the first 663 are 740 and the last three are 296. And that's going to be the answer to this problem, which we can also write in this other alternate way. Did you figure out this problem? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Hallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.